Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game from the Julius Bear Challengers Championship where 2020, uh, 2021 champion uh, Pragnananda is facing the 2022 champion Pranav uh, and uh, Prague is already leading the match. Like we said, we have two rapid and two blitz matches. It's a series of four mini matches and Prague already won. Uh, one game with the black pieces, the one that we've shown, then one game ended in a draw uh, and this is now the third game. Uh, so let's see how this one goes. Uh, now Pranav again with the white pieces opens with E4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to b5. Prano goes for the Rui Lopez. We have a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and bishop to c5, the deferred uh, classical defense. We have c3, knight g to e7, uh, shifting the knight over to g6. We have castles and knight to g6 now. Uh, d4, and also the uh, e5 pawn is nicely defended now, even though the white king castles uh, castled. Uh, we have d4, bishop to a7 and now bishop to g5 all been played before nothing new here pawn to f6 usually you don't want to play pawn to f6 but in some lines of some openings it is um, even recommended to do so like in some lines for example of the uh, of the petrov defense uh, it is just very strong so bishop back to e3 castles and the rook to e1 and here there are some games where d6 was played but here we have king to h8 and it is now as of move 10 that we have a completely new game so let's see uh, how uh, Pranav continues this. Knight b to d2. The knight is doing the usual maneuver. Knight is coming to f1, then to g3, or maybe e3, and then you will control uh, a lot of very nice squares here. So d6 by Prague, h3, taking away the g4 square from uh, Prague's pieces, and bishop to d7. We have knight to f1, continuing the knight's journey. e captures on d4, c captures, and pawn to d5 now. And uh, black can be very happy, but uh, also white is very happy here. Knight to g3. D captures on e4, knight captures, and now knight c to e7, so you can uh, start advancing that uh, c pawn. We have knight to c3, also the bishop on a4 is hanging, so knight to c3, bishop captures, and now queen captures. You could also capture with the knight, but it's not like the knight is coming to c5 or anything. So just queen captures on a4, the knight is better placed here, nicely centralized, and now knight to f5. And look at this beautiful knight Prague has on f5, uh, controls... Um, uh, a lot of squares here in the opponent's half of the board, uh, uh, and, and and also of course uh, a lot of squares on, on your uh, on your side of the board. It's always best if your knight can uh, control eight squares, not six or four. So rook eight to d1, and now rook to e8. Uh, again, it's a very strong knight. You do not want to trade it for the bishop. Um, uh, this bishop for the moment is a pawn, so no no reason to do that. Rook to e8, and queen to b3. Now Pranav goes after the b7 pawn. Prague defends it, and now. Now, knight to d5. Now, the knight here isn't really threatening all that much. It's just uh, very nasty to have the, uh, a knight in your half of the board. Like, this knight is, is incredibly strong. This knight could be even stronger. But it's easier to dislodge this knight. Like, you play c6 and this knight is gone. And you don't really want to play g4 because that pawn is in front of your king. So, queen to d6. Prague can always play c6. There's no rush to do it right away. Uh, he develops the queen, connects the rooks with bishop to d2, and now rook captures on e1. Uh, bishop captures, better than uh, capturing with the rook as you do want your d4 pawn defended. So bishop captures on e1 and now queen to d7. Uh, it's a move I don't really understand. Uh, Prague wants to play c6 and for some reason he plays queen to d7 first. I have no idea why he played that. If you guys have any ideas why queen to d7, uh, you are more than uh, welcome to share in the comments. It would be very insightful to learn what's this queen d7 idea business. Uh, business idea. So queen to c4 uh, and now c6, chasing away the knight, knight to c3 and pawn to b5 now, attacking the queen and getting away uh, getting rid of uh, one of the defenders of the d4 pawn. So queen back to b3 and now knight captures on d4. Looks dangerous because you are putting um, uh, a lot of pressure on that d file. Now you're, uh, the, the rook is x-raying the black queen on d7, but Prague has uh, everything under control. Knight captures, bishop captures. We have knight to e2 now putting pressure on the bishop and just pawn to c5. But okay, you can still pile up on that bishop. Bishop to c3, you cannot move the bishop. It'd be great if you could play bishop captures on f2 
to check and capture the rook, but the queen here is defending the rook on d1. So rook to e8. Uh, this is how Prague decided to, to go about this. Uh, knight captures on d4c, captures, and rook captures on d4. And now his idea is rook to e1 with check. And you can capture the rook. You don't have to capture the rook like you could You could play king to h2. And then after queen c7, check g3. Your rook is still hanging. You're going to move it back, and you get this position. And okay, you've opened up the white king a little bit, but nothing spectacular. Uh, but instead, just bishop captures on e1. Uh, Pranav doesn't want to uh, mess up his pawn structure any further. And now queen captures on d4. We have queen to e6. Now Pranav offers a pawn for some checkmating ideas. If queen captures on b2, then this will just be a forced mate in two. So instead, h6. Uh, creating some breeding room for the king on h7, and now bishop to c3. And this is now a monster bishop for Pranav, uh, if um, uh, Prague can't get rid of it from there. So queen to d3, and now pawn to g3, taking away the f4 and uh, h4, uh, g, uh, f4 and h4 squares from the knight. Knight to e5 now, and here queen captures on a6, grabbing one pawn, uh, but now comes knight to f3 with check. Of course, you cannot go to h1, queen to f1 will be checkmate, so king g2, and now queen to d5. Here, Prague is threatening some very nasty discoveries, and uh, you should definitely move the king out of the way, which uh, Pranav does. First, he gives one check, queen c8 check, king h7, and now king to f1. And uh, Prague doesn't have anything better. He's down a pawn. He should repeat uh, moves. Queen d1 check. King to g2. And now queen to d5. And here Pranav should continue repeating. Uh, otherwise he might run into a, a very nasty discovery. But he decided to continue the game. Even though he was incredibly uh, low on, uh, on time. He played pawn to h4. And now... Uh, there is a problem. The position is completely winning for Prague, but only if you find the exact sequence of moves that wins the game for him. So feel free to pause the video and win the game for Prague while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that you can win the bishop. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is knight captures on h4. Uh, with check that's the good stuff and now the problem is uh, there are no moves if you go king g1 this is checkmate if you go uh, what else can you do you can play king to h3 maybe go up the board and not much better queen to h1 check king g4 now queen to f3 check where you are either uh, asking for for the white king to capture the knight and then you're going to play f5 with an unstoppable checkmate as the pawns are now covering the g4 and g5 squares and even if you don't capture the knight you could go back but still just f5 again everything is taken care of here uh, queen to h1 will be checkmate regardless of um, uh, you, you, why the white king capturing the knight or not and if you go back of course queen to g2 is checkmate as the knight covers that square so that's the problem that prana missed when he invited Prague to go for that pawn grab he was up a pawn he was already down by a point in the match and that's why uh, i think he uh, de decided to do that so uh, yeah after after king to f1 uh, he had to play this, now comes queen to d1 check. Again, the move you had to see. Uh, the g2 square is covered by the knight, so you have to play bishop to e1, and now you just win the bishop. Queen to d3 check, king to g1, and now knight to f3 check. And it was in this position on move 44 that Prana resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. So Prague wins game 1, game 3, he wins both of his games with the black pieces, and he wins the first rapid match. And this is what I, I meant by the title, that even though uh, Pranav made this move when he was incredibly low on time, no one ever really loses the game on time. And it's something you hear very often, especially if you play in, in bars or libraries or, you know, wh wherever you play. Someone will say, okay, yeah, I mean, uh, I lost on time, but uh, I, 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 my position was fine or even I was better. Uh, but it's, it's always the exact same thing. You were lower on time because your opponent played better and you were struggling more and you had to spend more time to, uh, to get out of it. I mean, if, uh, <laughs> if you give... Uh, Magnus Carlsen and uh, anyone from, from the top 10 uh, a lot of time, they will find great moves. But if you give them very, very little time, chances are Magnus will emerge victorious much, much faster and much more often. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Very nicely done by Prague, um, uh, beating this year's uh, Julius Bear Challengers champion. Uh, but there's there are more mini matches, so we'll see what happens if Prana can uh, bounce back and and uh, take a few wins from Prague. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, big congratulations to those of you who found the, the winning idea. It was not an easy one to spot. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Lu uh, Lucia Basic, um, uh, Croatia, Nikolai Pokrovsky, Derwin the Hagler, and PG Mastering for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.